Hello Nick, we're here today to give an update on the FSA's proposal to restrict the sales of unregulated collective investment schemes and certain products akin to those schemes um, to retail investors. Can you provide us with an overview of the proposals? The FSA proposed back in August 2012 to increase the restrictions on promoting unregulated collective investment schemes to retail clients in the UK. Promotion to professional clients and eligible counterparties is going to be unchanged, but what the FSA wants to do is take away some of the uh, exemptions that permit promotion to retail. So in effect, once those exemptions have been taken away, uh, authorised firms will only be permitted to promote to certified sophisticated investors and in rarer circumstances to certain high net worth investors. Uh, and what's the status of these proposals, Nick? The status, well, as I said, the, the consultation paper was originally issued in August of 2012. Uh, the consultation closed in November 2012, and the FSA had originally said that we would have the finalised rules by the first quarter of this year. But obviously it's now the first quarter of this year, and we don't yet have the finalised rules. So the FSA published a letter uh, earlier in February 2013 setting out their, um, their timetable for the rest of the process. What is the timetable, Nick? Well, the FSA has said it plans to publish its final rules by uh, April of this year. So by the end of April 2013, we would expect to have the finalised rules. And the FSA is also now mentioning about transitional periods, which was one thing not originally covered in last August's consultation paper. And so are there any transitional provisions for firms? Well, it's not been made 100% clear yet, um, but what the FSA hints at very strongly in its letter to the industry of earlier this month is that for significant rule changes, there would normally be a transitional period of at least one year. So if we anticipate that the rules will be published by April of this year, then we might expect the rules to be ultimately enforced and firms to have to completely comply with them by April 2014. So it's, it's giving firms a significant transitional period to get up to speed. And you mentioned unregulated collective investment schemes. Are there any other products which are covered? Yeah, that's right. One of the things that the FSA is looking to do is widen the existing prohibition on um, authorised firms promoting unregulated collective investment schemes. So the FSA has come up with this concept of NMPI, non-mainstream pooled investment products. Does the FSA um, talk about anything to do with sco additional scope of the proposals? Yeah, that's something that is mentioned in the, the letter from earlier of this month. Um, as you know, one of the proposals from August was to broaden the prohibition on authorised firms promoting unregulated collective investment schemes to include other kind of pooled products. So, for example, securitisation structures were potentially caught and um, SPV notes issuances were potentially caught. And what the FSA does in the, the letter of earlier this month is mention that certain types of products are going to be excluded, perhaps, from this new extension of the prohibition. So venture capital trusts and real estate investment trusts are also uh, potentially going to be out of scope now. Um, and one other thing that the FSA mentions may now not be caught by the prohibitions is exchange-traded products. And in fact, that's something that was a great source of concern for the industry as to whether or not exchange-traded products were in scope, wasn't it? That, that's right. So originally, the FSA had proposed that certain SPV structures um, would also be caught by this prohibition on the basis that the economic exposure is very similar in some cases to an unregulated collective investment scheme. There was one exemption where you had an SPV where the um, exposure was um, referenced to um, listed securities or indices which themselves would, were listed um, entities. So that was the original proposal. And how has the FSA addressed this, if at all, in the, the letter from earlier this month? The letter is very short. All we have, but it does provide some comfort, is that exchange traded products will not be within scope of this restriction. So to the extent that you have SPVs where the securities issued under those SPVs are exchange traded, then it is likely that those will not be now be caught by that restriction. Okay. And these aren't the only um, regulatory initiatives that touch on pool investment products. How does the FSA's initiative in the UCIS and NMPI space interact with, for example, AIFMD or the, the PRIPS proposals? It, it is not clear at the moment. This seems to be a slightly stand standalone initiative, but firms will definitely need to look at the product governance paper 
um, which looks at um, origination of structured products more generally, as well as the scope of um, NMPIs and, and, and UCIS within the AIFMD regime. And PRIPS is somewhat down the line. PRIPS is an EU proposal, but, but certainly firms should be watching this space. Okay. And finally, um, looking at the UCIS paper, is there anything that firms can be doing at the moment to prepare for this? Nothing as yet, Nick. We do not have the final rules. Um, so I think it is, it is really waiting for those final rules to come out. And then we'll, firms will need to be looking at the scope of the final, um, the, the final text and then working out their, their underlying um, investor base. Thank you very much, Penny.